Hello Leo friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Leo April 2023 astrology horoscope forecast. This is for you if Leo is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other placement of Leo you watch for. What we're going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Leo friends, so birthdays August 15th through the rest of the sign or 23 degrees or so placement through the rest of the sign, then I suggest you additionally listen to my Virgo report since the Leo and Virgo reports will have relevance for you very late to great friends. So wow, we have an epic month with the beginning of a new eclipse cycle, Aries and Libra, which are going to make favorable aspects for Leos, thank goodness, because the Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle that is still in process has not been making great angles for you, but we do have some more of that energy as well. But what's most exciting this month is a ton, and I mean a ton, of continued fire energy. This was happening in March, this is still happening in April, and among those fiery placements are this new cycle of initiation that's beginning from this black moon solar eclipse in Aries. So we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk about what all of this energy can bring for you as well as Mars finally changing signs and what that could mean for you and the Taurus placements and what that can mean for Leo. We're also going to talk about the difference between the first week of April and the rest of April as it relates to doing anything. So we're going to talk about the slide into the retrograde as we progress past April 7th and separating out the month of what to do when for the most flow and ease. And then I will give you some important dates to note in your calendar for challenge, challenging aspects to watch and some sweet aspects to watch. So that's the summary of what we're going to cover. My intention is to try to make April as smooth and wonderful you as, for you as possible by letting you know the energetic potentials so that you can align with them. All right, so the first thing and the thing that I'm most excited about as a fellow fire sign, I'm a Sagittarius with Aries rising, so uh, anything that goes on that's exciting for fire is exciting for you and me. So we're going to start with that. We've got the sun, Chiron, Jupiter, star goddesses, Astraea, Vesta, Eris, Mercury for a little while longer, and the black moon solar eclipse on April 19th all happening in Aries. And what happens when something goes on in a fire sign, which as you can see, there's more than something going on, all of those placements are going to send the most favorable aspect in all of astrology to your Leo realm. Okay, so plenty of blessings of the fiery persuasion, lots of motivation, inspiration, ambition, activation for change can also bring some conflicts or some arguments or some restlessness or recklessness or impulsivity or impatience. That's definitely one side of Aries, but since it's making a nice angle for you, it's basically speaking your language and either way, it's very likely going to bring lots of wonderful opportunities for you to express yourself, to learn, to teach, to possibly travel, especially long distances, and just an overall exuberant, very zesty, exciting time. All of those planets in Aries can bring focus to your physical body, can bring lots of healing, can bring lots of awareness of your physical body, recognition, and further definition of what it is that you do, who you are, and what you want to bring to the world. And from the perspective of the ninth house, which is loaded full for Leo with these Aries placements, this is the long distance travel and learning sector. So teaching, you might find a way to share with others the things that you know. Learning, you may find the perfect courses or complete courses or finish some education or find something that's really exciting for you to study that you just are so engaged in spiritual studies, connections with the church or other spiritual organizations, different languages, different cultures. If you want to learn a different language, this time is amazing for that. Anything having to do with finding solutions or just broadening your horizons in general, having different viewpoints and different experiences and different interactions with different kinds of people that make you see the world in a different way. So all of this is just fanning the flames of your fire, your creativity, your excitement, your vibrance, and it's an overall very exciting time. So you're going to get kisses from the Aries placements as each of them cross over your placements. Some of these are short-term transits, some of them are long-term transits, but 
I really want to hone in on this eclipse, okay? So eclipses tend to bring radical changes, major goodbyes, major hellos, new chapters in life that open up in a very big way, and old chapters that close up. And often a lot of these changes, if not all of them, are non-negotiable, meaning they're happening and you can only choose how you're going to deal with how they happen. So change is coming, believe that. But the good news is that since the end of 2021, where we've had this Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle that's been shuffling up your stuff versus other people's stuff, bringing the storylines of birth, death, transformation, and rebirth into your arena, estate planning, credit, money, you know, inheritances, all of those things have been uh, getting stirred up. New financial relationships and agreements with people have all been building during this time for you. And that's going to continue until the end of the year. So we do have more of that energy very strong right now because May 5th, we've got a 14 degree Scorpio lunar eclipse. And that is going to bring dramatic endings um, to chapters involving other people's money or shared resources or intimate relationships. Or it can bring changes to your relationship with the psychology realm, parapsychology, spiritual realms, the lesser seen realms, basically. And even though that eclipse isn't happening till May, and we will talk about that more in the May report, you are going to feel all of those potentials here in April because four to six weeks before and after each eclipse is the hot spot for manifestation. So even though the eclipse isn't yet, it's definitely happening energetically this month. So we've got two of those going on between the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. So there is a new cycle starting now. Okay, so like I said, that Taurus Scorpio cycle will end uh, at the end of 2023. But what's starting now, the Aries Libra eclipse cycle will go through 2025. So we were talking about our stuff versus other people's stuff with the Taurus Scorpio cycle self-sufficiency versus interdependence. And now we're bringing in more me versus we, as I like to call them, themes, where it's just you and your personal relationship, closing up chapters with people or just friendships or relationships, opening up new levels of relationship to current relationships or just new relationships, period. And your relationship with yourself is also very targeted here. So all of that is happening. All the Aries energy is happening. And if you want to understand more about what a solar eclipse in the sign of Aries or in the house of Sagittarius, as all Leos have it, can bring you, then go to my YouTube channel, Annie um, Botticelli YouTube, scroll down to the, on the homepage to the eclipse uh, playlist, search for eclipses in Aries to better understand this eclipse, search for eclipses in Scorpio to better understand the one that's in May, but will be affecting now, and then search for and watch my eclipses in Sagittarius video because that is the ninth house where you will have this. And all early, middle, and late degree Leo placements will have this in the ninth house because since it's a late degree uh, eclipse, then even the middle and late degree friends in the plus of this chart are still going to have this in your ninth house because of the way that it shifts, it will just stay in there for you all. So that's how you can kind of get to know that better besides the things I've already listed. And included in those videos are ways that I have seen those eclipses manifest for people with those placements, you know, over the course of 20 years that I've been tracking them. So they're very comprehensive. But what I want to target now is the degree, okay? So everyone can get the blessings from this eclipse and this eclipse cycle that's starting now and going for the next couple of years. But those of you who are in the late degree Libra, Libra or late degree Leo zone. So we'll say 24 degrees through the rest of the sign. So that's going to be August 17th, August 18th, you know, through the rest of the time. And those of you who are closer to like 29 degrees, so August 21st, 22nd, I know one of my besties is in there. So hopefully she'll be very excited about this. You all will get the biggest kiss from this eclipse because of the direct trine that's made for your placement. So these themes could start cooking up even in February. 
And if you want to look back to see how they've manifested before, to give you some clues as to what you might be working with during these couple of years that this Aries Libra eclipse cycle is in effect, think back to the end of 2013 through early 2016 and early 2004 through early 2006. Think about the changes in relationship and the things that went on in that time from the me-we perspective to kind of give you ideas of how this manifested before. I often have people say, "Uh uh-oh, something bad happened in that time. Please tell me it's not going to happen again. I don't know if it's going to happen. But what I can tell you is that there were separate astrological factors that, that were unique that were occurring at those times that are not occurring now. So it doesn't mean that everything happens again. Um, necessarily. It just means the themes and the way that those energies manifested, you might, you know, see a focus on those themes come back. Okay, while I could talk about fire energies and beautiful trines and how great that is for Leo forever, we do have other stuff to talk about. (laughs) So one of those things is the Taurus placements, which are now making squares to your placement. And this is focusing on your work and employment. This could mean a few things. It could mean you've got work blessings and recognition, income boosts, special stuff that's coming from your work or employment sector. It could mean educating yourself to advance in your work, or it could mean going deeper into a hobby that may become your work in the future um, or making plans for transitioning to a different line of work. So all of that energy is highlighted. It does kind of show that some hard work might be getting done with the tourist placements. There's diligence, discipline, Um, you know, steadfastness, and it is making a 90 degree angle to your placement. So it might require you to be a little bit more contained and focused, you know, and this energy really wants to let your fire run wild. So the combination of your inspiration and creativity coupled with the hard work of Taurus could help you to advance really um, wonderfully in your work and career sector. This can also highlight bosses, authority figures, father figures, um, and in some case, you know, just any any parent parental energy. Mars is now moving through Cancer after a long time, August of 2022 through March of 2023 of moving in an air sign, which was actually in a nice angle for Leos for all that time. So now we're, you're working with um, Mars going through your subconscious mind. So either you're going to get super deep into your psychological studies, um, healing your addictive mind, confronting fears and addictions and healing them, trying to master your mind through meditation and making gold out of whatever mischief might be is basically alchemy from your inside out. Okay, so this can stir up some different patterns and thoughts and things making you really have to evaluate how you can master your mind better and what choices do you have to make to do that. Maybe it will be some diet changes. Maybe it will be some inner work. Maybe it will be, you know, focusing on spiritual progress. But you have Mars, Mars's help. And wherever Mars goes, there tends to be a little bit of obsess- obsessive energy. So you might find that you're obsessing about some of these things and diving really deeply into those realms. Okay, so I'm going to just touch on Pluto going into your opposite sign. I did talk about this in the March report, so you can go back there and listen um, because I probably might have said some different things that I might touch on now. But this is starting decades of a process of Pluto moving through your seventh house. You may have already been feeling this over the last year or even the last two years, the energy of birth, death, transformation, rebirth coming into your relationship space, either through people or pets or, you know, we're just births and deaths, figurative and literal, have really started to profoundly affect you. And you're heralding a time of, you know, really completely transforming the nature of your physical body and the nature of your relationship with yourself and others. So that is happening. Faded relationships of all kinds are likely to start coming in in abundance. So just be on the lookout if you're looking for special people in your life. You might find that, you know, some people where you're like, wow, we were really meant to meet, you know, soulmates and just other people that you're drawn to for major healing or transformation are likely going to be magnetized to you. Okay, so now I want to talk about the um, the difference between the energies up until April 7th versus after April 7th. Because, you know, February, March, and April with having all direct stars moving forward has been about big actions, planning, 
big trips, big events, um, anything having to do with planning for the future, investing, you know, anything that you need clarity about in order to do very well, launches, things like that. It's been the time to do, 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 and go, go, go. Now, it's not that you're necessarily going to be less busy after April 7th because the, the planets are pretty busy and they're going to stay busy for a while. But the energy is going more internal and backward, so inward and backward, where from April 7th through the end of May, we've got a full Mercury retrograde cycle, including the pre-shadow, pre-transit shadow period and the post-transit shadow period. I'll go over those dates here shortly. But this is going to very much be about going back over things, editing, redoing, and not trying to force anything, not trying to plan too much, and just experimenting in ways that are low stakes and keeping your schedule light. The less you schedule yourself unnecessarily during this time, the less you will find yourself on the phone trying to reschedule all the things that you had scheduled. Okay, so things that had been set may get called into question or be canceled outright. Uh, and the and also things might need your attention, like you make all these plans to do things and then guess what? Your car breaks or your phone falls in the toilet or, you know, something happens with your dishwasher. Appliances and devices are likely to start going haywire and you might need to devote funds and time to getting those things back in working order. So that's something else that keeping your schedule light will help you to show up for. Plus people around you might just need you um, and there just might be other things closer to you, closer to your energetic field that you have to deal with. The more you leave yourself unscheduled, the more you'll have space for last minute magic, which is my favorite expression of the retrograde. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some dates that of, of note, including important aspects of note. And if you are a person, first of all, who likes to do your planning based on the astrological rhythms of the universe, which is what my work is all about. I even have a book called Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe. It's on the book um, shelf in Barnes and Noble and other major bookstores internationally. That is what I do. Okay. So if you want to benefit from my 2023 direct slash retrograde calendar with what things are better to do when, go to AnnieBAstrology.com, Annie, the letter B, astrology.com, and join my exclusive content portal, and you will get access to that uh, calendar so you have it for your planning purposes. And if you want a list, I'm going to give you a few dates here, but if you want a more complete list of my sweet and salty dates, salty meaning the challenging aspects, sweet meaning the harmonious ones, plus the notable aspects, what they can bring delivered to your inbox one month early, then go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter. AnnieHelpsYou.com is also the interface for all the free goodies I make for you each month, including lots of astrology kiss blogs and written horoscopes. And all those links are in the notes underneath the podcast or video. Okay, so now let's talk about the dates. The days around April 3rd, we've got Mercury squaring Pluto. So some power struggles, challenging news. Uh, the days around April 5th, we've got full moon in Libra. Um, just bringing fullness, completion, fruition, possibly drama to um, your relationship space. We've got, and that drama could be for better or worse, something great could culminate or some difficult news could come in. April 7th is the ending of that open window and the, the beginning of the plummet down into retrogrades. And once we're free of the Mercury retrograde energy, we're going to very soon go into the Venus retrograde shadow period this summer or winter for you all down under. So, you know, we, we definitely, if you're listening to this in February, March, early April, it's definitely the time to do the direct sorts of things, you know, action oriented future planning and, and such, because we're going to be going inward and backward for a long time. April 11th, we've got the Sun conjunct Jupiter. I love this aspect for luck and, um, you know, just extra special goodies. Sometimes the Sun amplifying Jupiter's energy can bring some ruckuses, but for the most part, Jupiter being known as the Great Benefic tends to be some just a little bit of extra luck and glow. And that's great for everybody, but anyone close to 21 degrees of a fire sign, you know, so if you're 21 degrees of Leo then you'll get an extra special kiss. And we'll give a five degree orb. So 15 through 26 degrees, the closer to 21 degrees, the more you get the kiss from that April 11th sun in um, Aries conjunct Jupiter in Aries. So that will equate to dates around August 5th 
10th or so through August 16th or so, and the closer to around August 10th or 11th, the more you get that kiss. April 19th or 20th is the new moon, black moon, solar eclipse in Aries at 29 degrees. Starting a new cycle of initiation, a black moon is a second new moon in a calendar month or a zodiac sign. There's extra power behind it. There's also the pinnacle degree, which is 29 degrees. It's the last degree of a sign, so there's something really big ending and beginning. Could have a tilt to the past. April 21st, Mercury officially goes retrograde through May 15th. Post-shadow transit lasts through May 30th. April 27th, we've got Mars, a little grouchy in Cancer and Moody, squaring Chiron and Aries. So you could get a little criticism or difficulty from your family that could cut deeply um, into your self-esteem. But in the days around the 29th, Mars will then transition into a nice aspect with Uranus. So hopefully some sweet blessings from any conflict that comes up or just some unrelated, uh, fun, surprise, positive things with home and family or your inner world. If you would like to have some free courses, go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. That's my school, Luminous Life Multiversity. You can find wellness courses. You can find my Unleash Your Money Magnet um, course that teaches you about financial consciousness and how you can change what your, the, the tune you're vibrating to financially and your points of financial attraction. So that's free at loomlife.com. Again, all these links are in the notes underneath the video or podcast. If you want to learn astrology and you resonate with how I teach, go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. You can register for my Astrology Basics and Beyond course, or if you want to go for the gusto, you can get that basics course free when you sign up for my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course, where I'll teach you either how to fine tune your craft and give kick butt readings every time and earn money for your love of astrology if you've been studying a while, or I'll take you from ground zero to doing paid readings over the course of this course, which is continuing to grow. And you can, if you think I put a lot into my free offerings, you should see what I put into that course. So you can register for that um, going through my school or you can go directly to beastropro.com, beastropro.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.